Welcome to Conflict Done Well, our first virtual class. Um, would anyone like to take time to check in to get present right here? Um, so we can get an idea of where we're starting. We're doing what? <laughs> would anyone like to check in? To say a little something so we can get an idea of where we're starting. How are you doing? What's up for you? That kind of thing. I'm unemployed. <laughs> they closed down Susie Cakes. And just laid everybody off to take unemployment? Yeah. It's weird. I would imagine. It's been really weird. I've been home. And it's weird. <laughs> Yeah. I'm so sorry. Super stressful, I would imagine. Yeah. It's scary, everything that's happening. It's really scary. Yeah. 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 Cynthia, is there anything you would like to say? Um, well, John and I are doing pretty well. Um, we're a little better able to weather things than some folks because uh, we live in a house and we have a fairly big backyard and so we can get out and see sunshine and green grass and still be socially distant and um, I already worked uh, you know digitally on you know via the internet so that part of it um, hasn't been too hard but um, We're very concerned for people like Adriana, who lose their jobs, don't have any money coming in. We're getting more and more reports of people that we know who have COVID-19, and at least one of them is in the hospital. And so it is a very scary time. I'm, I'm very grateful that our church has started daily prayer morning and evening because that helps a lot uh, just being able to see friends from church and and uh, pray with them has made a big difference but i very much miss all my exercise classes i can't the gym is closed i can't get to the pool yeah we haven't been able to meet you know i try to do uh some simple stretches and things, but uh, aside from trying to get up and walk around the house and that sort of thing, I haven't done a lot of physical movement. Yeah. So that's, that's bothersome. Yeah. I am um, not going into work. I'm home with Rosalie and Houston and Lisa. And Lisa is teaching um, online uh, for many hours a day, or for will be, and it's been a meeting all week. Uh, Mosley and Houston have been very patient, but uh, it's definitely true that when we're together all the time, we have to really work on not getting under each other's feet and on each other's nerves, and that, that is sometimes successful and sometimes not. Um, I feel very grateful for having a uh, week. And I'm worried um, you know, with anxiety and stress around what will happen next. Uh, just like it is a new kind of crisis, and I'm ready for it to be over. But um, also we're trying to figure out ways, strategies to improve things that are within my reach. Um, and that's one of the reasons behind conflict done well in general. And for you know, when I feel like I don't have options. Um, Usually, I am simply disappointed at not being able to do what I am used to being able to do, but I'm not looking at what my options really are because I think I'll be unsatisfied. So I would like to suggest that um, we can do several things that are direct responses with our body and with our um, thinking and our feeling that are direct responses to our stress and our concern and make us 
ready to respond to unfortunate situations, to conflict, to not having what we need, to being afraid. Um, and that's where martial arts and theater arts and psychology all get together in the same cart as a practice, which is why this is important to me. Um, it's kind of weird to be having two cameras at once. Well, I'm going to let it continue for right now because I'm not sure what the. Well, you know, I'm not, it's an experiment. Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, and there's no weird audio going on for you, repetitions or anything like that, or echoes? It's like a little echo, but it's not disturbing for me. Okay. Let's see if I can turn this down a little bit. I'll see if I can do something. Hey, Rosie, please don't change anything. Because you're mu unmuted. You're muted over there, so it's not going to be Do you hear me saying please stop changing anything? Yeah. Okay. So will you step away from it so we can check and see if you can be seen and we can move around so that we can be seen. But let's uh, let's ignore the cameras right now and just work together a little bit. So we're going to do, uh, if, if you're on board for that, we're going to do some physical exercise. So you'll need a little bit of space. If you're in bed, you'll have to wiggle or you can point yourself in various directions. We're going to do some breathing. We're going to do a little bit of um, parts of meditation. Um, and all of this is keeping in mind that what we're wanting to be is ready to respond when we feel fearful, in conflict, attacked, and full of anxiety, that sort of thing. Because our bodies are already giving us uh, signals about what's going on for us. Shortness of breath. Um, some people experience shortness of breath and they immediately, they, they start thinking without being able to stop thinking about it being a symptom. Yeah, virus, and what the, what's really happening is they're panicking and they're having they're having a breathing um, experience and they're not experiencing symptoms. But the, the chance that they would get sick is so threatening that they can't panic move and they can't they don't find find a full time stop. And there are various ways to respond to that, and one of them is to describe to yourself what's going on. As simple and person is, I feel short of breath. And to respond to that by exploring the feeling of it to see what's really happening without judgment about it. So you put aside the question, am I exhibiting symptoms? You put aside, is it a panic attack? You don't have to decide about any of that. You just start to explore it a little bit to see what's really going on. So we're going to start with breath since it's a symptom. Temperature is also a thing. You can you know, check your temperature in various ways. Um, but we're going to work with breath and heart rate for a second. So please, um, if you are you are you seated or are you standing up, Adrienne? I stood up. Okay. So Yay. <laughs> bend your knees in a way that helps you feel the different ways you're coming in contact with the floor. If your legs are straight, you'll feel different pressure on the balls of your feet and your heels than if your knees are bent. You'll feel your weight widen and spread when your knees are slightly bent. And then stick your butt out and feel that lower back stretch, and then bring your hips all the way forward and feel that stretch, and then try to find a middle where you can wiggle your hips side to side, and it feels like a balance experiment, not like you're straining anything. So all the way back is a stretch, all the way forward is a stretch, and you wanna get right in the middle where you can swing and move and it doesn't feel like a stretch. Does that make sense? Yes. So you're finding your balance by causing um, extreme movement, you know, and feeling that stress as a stretch, and then you're finding the middle where your structure supports you. And that's one way to judge. If I'm having, trans transitioning that idea to breath, if I'm having a breath experience and I'm short of breath, what really is the is my capacity? So I breathe all the way. Everybody, touch your chest, touch your sternum, and breathe all the way in so you can feel it with your fingers. And let it all the way out. And then move your hands down so you're cupping your belly. And breathe so you push your hands out. And your 
after that and let it go. Ah. So you can see me from the front and you can see me from the side. Bend your knees. Mostly can you do this with us and stay in place? And would you move forward a little bit since you're a little bit shorter? That one, how about right there? And I'll move back a little bit. There, now you can be seen from the front and back and I can be seen from the front and back. Hook up your belly and breathe into your hands. Let me see that for you. Is that better? Okay. You can also push your belt down a little bit so your belly's better. Okay. So cup your belly and breathe into your hands. Feel yourself expand into your back and then breathe out again. If you're having symptoms, that will be difficult. And if you're not having symptoms and it's a panic attack, in general, you should be able to spread because physically you have the same amount of space. So that'll be a difference. And then put one of your hands behind on your back and press in, and one of your hands on your belly and press in a little bit so you can squish yourself, and then breathe to push your hands away from each other. And one more time. And one more time. And hands drop and shake them a little bit. And shake them up. Shake them down. And let that shake go into your shoulders a little bit. And your hips. And relax. And just start with a wiggle that's not really a shake. And breathe into your belly so that it goes into your back. As you wiggle, it's a tiny wiggle. And then let it be more of a shake and breathe into that shake. And out. And bounce on your knees to your feet a little bit. And put your hands out to the side like you're saying, what? <laughs> And then look to your left and your right. And turn your hands over and push down and out. If you're trying to push things away from you. And see that you have a full range of motion. It's just like you had before. And roll your head around. And roll the other direction. Let your head hang in front. Bend your knees and let your head come up. So straighten your legs, let your head hang, and then bend your knees and let your head come on top. And let your hands drop. And shake it all and look, and look back and forth and breathe into your belly. Ah, okay, how do you feel now? Stretched. Yeah, better. Better, okay. And this is minor, right, it's fast. It's you doing something that's specific as though you're getting your body ready for something. And sometimes when you feel like you're under stress or in, in the middle of anxiety or you're being attacked by somebody, you can do this really quickly and you're ready to go because your body's in the habit, especially if you do it every day, of having something that is a trigger to remind you that you have lots of options when you sometimes think that you have very few. Thoughts so far? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Are you ready for another physical exercise or would you like to move to language and then come back to physicality after that? Because we're really focused on connecting the two because you can do stuff here when this is stuck and you can do stuff here when you can't move. You're stuck in your house. You're stuck in a situation. You can do, you can move your mind and your feelings and your heart when your body seems stuck, and you can move your body when your mind and your heart, your soul, all that intangible stuff. You can change tangibly when there are intangibles are stuck, and you can change one when the other seems to not be able to move. And in reality, you're moving the whole system every time you move a new part of it. Mm. So it's always a way into options, which is why martial arts says if somebody sings at you, you know, don't worry about what you're going to do. Just do something that's different from what you're doing. Just go. Just be in motion already. Right. Yeah. Could could we do words 
for a, a bit. I need to sit in a chair because of my Absolutely. back. It's hard to stand a long time. Absolutely. So thing number one, you just asked for what you needed using words, and now we're doing something physically to respond to that. Get yourself resituated. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I can be seen. Okay, I can. See. In reality, you just had your finger at your lips. Was there something you were thinking about? I was trying to connect the audio to one of my sound bars because my phone is not loud enough. I'm using my phone. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't plan for this accordingly. Right. Um, audio is not super loud to us. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I wonder, is there a way to reduce your volume a little bit of the, of the microphone, but then increase your own speaker? I don't know. Okay, let me see. I don't know what's that loud. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. Let's not, let's not worry about it. It's not that loud. I don't know if it. No, let's, let's not worry about it. Let's just move forward. It, it, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's all really loud because I'm on my phone and I'm like holding it really close to my face. That could be it. We're all, we're all we're just on our microphones anyway. That could be it. Okay, are you ready for a little language? Yes. All right. Um, so I would like to ask to remind everybody about um, several ways that Conflict Dunwell thinks about how we do what we do. Um, has it been your experience that um, patterns, that we do the things that we're accustomed to doing uh, frequently, and we, they, it feels conflicts feel kind of similar. Like this is the same kind of same as the last time I did this. When we think about it, has that is that been everybody's experience? Maybe. What? I uh, it's been so long since I've gone, so I don't know. Oh, what I mean is, um, when you when you're in conflict with the people that you're around most frequently your spouse, your family, your coworkers, that sort of thing. Do you find that it seems like the way we do conflict, we repeat a lot. We do the same kinds of things a lot. Like the argument I have with Rosalie or Rosalie has with me may sound very similar the next time we have the argument. It may sound very much like the last time we had the argument. Yes. I just want to, oh, Cynthia? It has been, but since I've been taking this class, I'm more conscious of different ways to approach things. And so I'm, I guess I'm kind of half and half right now. Sometimes I still fall into the old pattern, but other times I have enough awareness that I go, okay, we have choices here. Yeah. What are the choices? Yeah, Rosalie has this reason. That's where I am. Are you on Are you refreshing? Okay. Well, if you'd like to raise your hand, these questions, you don't have to be silent at all. You can participate anytime you want to. You know that, right? Yeah. Okay. Just check. So, um, before I feel, I've been trying to put a pause in between um, having an experience and deciding about it or having a judgment. So, if Rosalie and I are having a disagreement, and it feels similar to me, rather than saying, oh, here it goes again, I try to tell myself, oh, we're repeating. It feels to me like this is very similar to last time. So not, and that's a good thing or a bad thing, just I wonder why we're doing this again. Uh, I wonder about that. So I stay curious about it. Um, and if something feels very new, I don't decide right away, oh, that's a good thing, this is new. I think to myself, oh, what, what feels new about this? What is it that's um, interesting and draws my attention because it doesn't feel like something I've done before? Um, if the primary recognition is 
the science to learn conflict done well, or to learn without conflict, draws my attention to how my options are different. I start noticing things in a different way because I'm going to be practicing with it. If that, if that happens, then the next question is, well, what's really going on? And we just did some exercises to get our body asking that question. You know, where are my hips? How's my breath doing? Are my shoulders working? Does my neck feel, you know, stiff? Or do I have good mobility? We can do exactly the same kind of questioning about a conflict. So if I tell Rosalie, uh, well, how about Rosalie, will you tell me that you're disappointed? When she says she's disappointed, I have an immediate feeling that I want her not to be disappointed. So sometimes I can push her to keep doing the things she's disappointed about, or I can say, no, 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 you're not, with my body or with my voice. Or I could say, about what are you disappointed? To find out more information. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So what, I'm, what I would like to ask us to do is bring an example to mind that we'll share that is a thing that you do a lot that has to do with being different wanting something different than what someone else does. And then ask yourself, what is it about this that is familiar? And then ask yourself, and what is that, what's the need behind that? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. Would anyone like to go first? I can't think of anything. Okay. Rosalie, do you remember anything that you would like to bring up like that? Like an argument that we have had or a difference that we have that we have a lot. Okay, what's that? What's a, what's the disagreement that we have? Oh, so when someone you feel like someone criticizes you a lot, let's let's since since a mom is not here right now, let's not make it mom. Let's make let's pretend it's me. Because I think I can be critical of you too. Will you have to sit right in front of the camera, please? Thank you. I can sit with you down here. Would that be more comfortable? Okay. So, when's the last time you felt criticized by you? This morning? What happened this morning? I'm not sure we'll be able to hear you. We can go closer to this. If you, if you, if you curl your body like this, I'm not sure we'll be able to do that. Your mind's coming up. Okay, let's go closer to this for you. So, Rosalie, will you tell us a little bit about what the criticism was like? So, I was trying to um, tell mom that I knew that I would send something there and it was like something I would do. Ah, so did it feel like, did it feel like um, I was telling you that I would, didn't want to listen to what you wanted and I just wanted you to take what I was offering you? Yeah. And that felt critical? Okay. And then, and then, and then the leaving the room um, was like chopping it off and stopping it before it could go any further. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about it? Okay. Well, what do you, what did you, would you step up this a little bit? What did you need? Let's talk to this one over here. I wanted um, to not, like, to not um, step out of the room, but, like, that came up and so I'm trying not to cut it off. So when I left the room, you felt like I was cutting things off and not paying attention? Yeah. Okay. What we're doing now is describing it. And I'm not telling her, that's not what I meant by walking out of the room, or it wasn't actually me that did the walking out, but I'm not, I'm not uh, telling her anything about it or deciding anything about it. I'm just asking for a description. That, it felt like uh, when I walked out of the room, it felt like that I wasn't listening and that I was cutting everything out. Yeah. So what, 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 what might we do next to be able to do this differently next time? Um, you could actually not say more. Okay. You could say more. So I could say, tell me more um, when I'm not sure what needs to happen next? Yeah. Oh, okay. I could also check with you to see if you feel heard. 
or if you agree with me, or if you're ready for me to make a counter argument, I can check with you instead of telling you what to do. Would you feel comfortable asking for that if you think that's not happening? Yeah, sure. Okay. You could describe it. You could say, I feel, I, I feel like I'm not listening very well. I feel like you're not listening very well. I feel like I don't, I'm not feeling very heard. Would you listen to me some more a little bit, please? Yeah. yeah. So what we've done is describe what the feeling was. I haven't told Rosalie anything about how I feel about it. I just asked what she needs and asked for proposals for how it might be different next time, which is different in my experience than the way that sort of thing usually gets handled. And even if it doesn't work right away, at least what we're doing is talking about how we'd like to handle it. If that's what you do. Instead of my saying, I'm the parent, bigger and more powerful than you, whatever. This is the way it's going to be. And then mm -hmm. leaving when I'm done. And so she gets left standing there yeah. with her knees and not feeling like she really got hurt. It happens a lot. It happened more than once. Yeah. Thank you for saying, thank you for uh, describing that for us. I think unmuting that one over there would not make the sound quality better. I think unmuting that would give us an echo because then we can have it all in the same place. And I think this mic might be better than that. But we could try it. But instead of doing tech experiments right now, can we continue with the work that we do? Are you feeling bored? Well, should anyone feel bored when someone else is working on something, anybody, or they find their attention wandering, which is another way of saying bored, what you can do is you can immediately work with your body. You can see how Rosalie is rocking side to side on the couch mm -hmm. and sort of lying down. You could sit down, you could rise up. You could also hold one foot off the ground and work on your balance so that your attention has more space in it for what's going on while someone else is working. One of the things you can do when someone scares you or when you're feeling anxious about something or worried that a conflict is not going to work out very well is you can take your attention and put it on that person and do something with your hands like rubbing them together or clasping them. You'll see people do that. We already have patterns with our bodies that we do when we're uncomfortable. We cross our arms and raise our shoulders and constrict our breathing without thinking about it. And one of the things you can do is, if you wanted to, is you could, is you could purposefully lift up through the top of your head, drop your shoulders, give yourself some more space in around your body so you feel the air flow and doesn't feel like so constricted. This tells people constriction, right? If, if you see someone do this, it gives you an idea of how they feel inside. It also just may mean that they, you know, are too cold or something. But one of the things it can mean is that they are feeling like they need to protect their body, doing a lot of different stuff. And one of the things you can do is you can choose to change something by bending your knees, by wiggling your butt a little bit, by breathing more. That can be very subtle. Taking off your glasses and changing your perspective and putting them back on again. There's all kinds of things that you can do if you feel your attention wander and you want to bring it back. But you also could just check out. Rosalie doesn't have any obligation to keep her attention with us. If she's feeling the need to check out, she could do that anytime. The challenge is to choose, choose, choose what you're doing and notice what you do without choosing and then think, hmm, I wonder if that's getting me what I want. I wonder if this is, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to stay standing because that helps me to keep my focus and helps, remi it reminds, standing with my body reminds my brain that I need to keep my attention on our process so that I do my role, of, I, 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 I do the facilitation thing responsibly. When I sit down or cross my arms or start to think about something else, it's very, I find it very difficult to be a good facilitator. So I do things with my body that reminds me that I'm teaching. Does that make sense? Yes. Would anyone else like to bring forward something that is um, a conflict and we can look at it structurally? We can also do stereotypical things or talk about conflicts as though they were someone else doing it. You can use fiction and your imagination. You can say, I have a friend who, people do that, people do that all the time. There's no need to be confessional 
to still be working on conflict done well because all the time we're figuring out ways to be different together. We're just doing it through our automatic responses and habits usually rather than through our conscious specific creative habits. Okay. I also stand like this. If you look at the at the Brandon Williams Sprague window, um, I have one foot forward and one foot back. In, in Aikido, that's called Hanmi. I can shift my way towards someone and shift my way away from someone without moving it. Moving feet makes me look like I'm doing something. And being in Hanmi and shifting my way looks like I'm not doing something when in fact I really, really am. So it keeps it private that I'm changing things. And in martial arts, you want that because you don't want the other person to see that you're doing stuff. And in relationship, you want to have your own boundaries and your own space to change things that are your responsibility to change. And the other person may or may not need to know about that. It can be done secretively to keep power, but it can also be done just because I'm being private, not secret. It's just going on over here, and it's not your business right now that I'm trying to change my heart rate or making space to think about what you just said. Remember that we're connecting the physical to the emotional and the psychological because they affect each other. Cycle of awareness about what you were paying attention to at the moment. And the question still is there. Um, would anyone like to bring up a conflict situation um, that is in their imagination or is in their experience or both? And let us work with that. Well, I have one. And um, it, it, it's kind of a, of a I've, I've sort of been framing it in a it's kind of a male female situation. So it seems like when something breaks or something isn't going well and uh, or I'm in the midst of something that has several steps to it and then oftentimes a man in my vicinity will step in and fix it or step in and do the next step or you know and that really bugs me a lot <laughs> and so um, Rather than, than lashing out and being all, you know, hyper-female about it, um, I've been trying to look at it from different perspectives about, uh, you know, being in close proximity with someone in, a sh in a, an enclosed space or it's just being... Um, trying to be helpful but not inquiring about my needs before something goes on and so uh and that's not that's not just at home that's that's like there have been situations at church or in in a, another meeting or something along those lines where that that often happens and maybe i'm wrong for perceiving it as a a guy thing you know maybe that's more my reaction to it but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think about what other choices would I have in that situation. Yep. Um, shall I, uh, let's see, what would be best for you? Shall I tell you what I think you said, or shall I go right to the structure of conflict done well and make some recommendations? Well, why don't you reflect back to me what you, what you heard me say? What you think I said? It sounds to me like um, when you take a pause for whatever reason, it is frequently your experience that someone else will step in and move the process forward as though you needed help, as though the process needed to keep moving at a certain pace, and will not consult you when they do that. And mm -hmm. that <coughs> frequently the person who does that is male. So we're going to look at whether there's a <coughs> I 
I made the mistake of having granola before we ate, so there's oh. in the back of my throat. Yeah, yeah. I hate when that happens. <coughs> um, and that, so there's probably a gender component that we'll want to pay attention to because it may or may not be that that's what's going on. You'll notice I'm not giving an opinion about that. I'm just putting it out there. Right. Um, is there any part of that that um, is inaccurate so far? No, that sounds very accurate. Did I miss anything? I'm sorry? Did I miss anything? Fail to report no. anything that you did? Uh, no, no, I don't think you did. Okay. Um, the long process, if we were going to do a session on this, the long process would be Let's act that out and recreate some part of it so that we find the various parts of the triggers. And then we would go through the triggers one by one and see what's going on in there. And right. you would do that as though you're the only person involved because the other person is not here. If the other person were here, we would still go through as though you were the only person involved. And then we would give them the chance to go through as though they were the only person involved. Because the things we can really put our hands on are the things that we can really put our hands on. Because I can't change the other person except by agreement and practice all the time. So um, we would see what it feels like to be triggered in that way, and then we would pull it apart a little bit. And then as we do that, we would describe the various bits of it. We've done a short version of that right now, so we have a description to work with. And then we would go through and we would say, how about this, how about this, how about this, how about this? as options and then we would go through each one and we would act them out so you could get a little experience with them and think you know i think that one's going to be the best in this kind of situation and then you would make an agreement with yourself and hopefully with us that you would try that next time mm -hmm. and then we would check in next time and see if you did that and how it worked mm -hmm. okay, okay. Since, we're, since it's remote we're dealing with a relatively short period of time I would like putting the structure out so I can so I can illustrate how it gets broken down and pulled apart so you can really work with it at depth. I would like to suggest a proposal and sort of move rapidly through the, phase, the, the, the steps and see if you get something out of that that's helpful. Is that acceptable? Yes, that is acceptable. Okay, so I would like to say that as a guy, so I'm, I'm just going to speak for me, which is way down the line in, in, the, in the longer process. So I'd like to say that I, I as, as a male, this feels like it is gender linked, I have been encouraged throughout my life to step in, take over, help, tell people how it's going to be, move things along, all that stuff. Yeah. And if I don't do that, I'm given some significant negative feedback. You're not providing leadership. You know, what's your contribution to this group? What, what, what's your worth, basically? Eventually, my worth gets called into question if I do not behave in that way. Mm. And so part of my work has been to be able to tell people, it seems to me like you're, you are calling my leadership into question because I didn't keep the pace or accelerate the pace, but I allowed the pace to decline, and that's something that I shouldn't have done. But I need you to know that I chose to not be the shot caller at that point. I don't want to get shots because it seems to me that we would get a better result if I didn't do that. And when I talk to other men about that, I encourage them to look for ways to not have the same response to the same situation over and over again because it's guaranteed that if you do the same thing every time, it's guaranteed to be wrong as much as it is to be, to be right. You weren't paying attention, you were just acting up at it. So let me say I would like to own the gender part of that and validate that whether you need it or not. I just want to put that out there. All right. Rosalie is ready to move back to physical. Um, so let's, she and I will stand up and we'll continue and we'll continue doing what we're doing. We'll just add a physical component because we can accommodate Rosalie as well. So when Rosalie, Rosalie, will you put your hand out as though you're going to do something and then stop? And a physical example of this would be for me to come over and move the process forward at my pace, but not at Rosalie's pace. Does that make sense? Yes. Rosalie, may I be the finger pointer and I'm going to stop and then you move me forward. So that's the thing I might do when I stop. You have to repeat, feel me to move me, feel my balance and move my whole balance. Yeah. Yeah. 
So sometimes that can be super helpful. If somebody wants to poke you, you can take their poke, I don't your poke, and you can move it forward. And that allows you, by moving it forward, to change where they are, right? And you can help yourself that way by choosing to move things forward at a pace they did not choose. But I'm taking control to protect myself in a physical uh, conflict. But when Rosalie has a project to do, robotics, art, and I make it go at my pace rather than her pace, I'm interfering rather than helping. Or at least I run the risk of interfering rather than helping. And what Rosalie might say to me is, it feels to me like you want this to go faster. Would you say that, Mama? It seems like you would like this to get back to go faster. And that's not what I would like. And that's not what I would like. Ah, and I would say, oh, because she's engaging me, so I'm gonna try to move your body, and I would like for you to take your balance and really drop it so that it's very difficult for me to move you. Are you ready? Suddenly, I look how I'm bent over. She even bent her knees and went all the way forward. Oh, ow. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, no. She even, even, that's what I'm fine. She even bent her knees, right, and dropped all the way to the floor, so I fell over. So now will you stay standing? And I'm going to try to move your body, and you bend your knees and don't let me move. Are you moving? Because sometimes when you're in a conflict with somebody, it's hard to keep your breath going. So keep your breath going, but keep your body from being moved. And so now it's very difficult for me to move her because she's saying, you would like for the pace to be different, I would not like for the pace to be different. And she's being where she is and not being able to be moved, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. In a physical conflict, it happens really fast. Right. So you prepare yourself to respond very quickly. And sometimes in a work environment, the person can reach over and can already be moving you along and it's very fast because they're not thinking about it. They just went. And sometimes you have to reach out and say, please wait, right? So that I can feel my weight and you can feel your weight and we can please wait the person. I'm waiting her feet. So both the, the similes and um, uh, homophones are really interesting. I'm, I'm waiting her physically to make her wait. Uh-huh. Okay. Correctly. Metaphors, how our brains work, is they connect psychology, how we're thinking and feeling about things, to physical reality. That's one of the things metaphors are for. So I'm waiting her so that she will wait. You could hand somebody a, a question and wait them. When I reach forward to, to make you the tech go faster because I think you're not understanding it, one of the things you can say is, if you'd like things to go faster, I'd like to say, please wait before you move. Please wait before you move us forward. I'll tell you when I'm ready. It looks like you're about to help. I haven't asked for help. Will you, will you wait, please? And you can decide which, which, which words uh, work better for you. But you would, need, you would need something to work with along those lines because the person may not be conscious of what they're doing or they may consciously be trying to take over. It's, yeah. it's hard to tell sometimes. Does this make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. So, um, well, are you are you ready for a scenario, a sitting down scenario? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If your if your attention wanders, you can move your body and stretch it. You can move your body your own, and that will be fun too. Or you can sit down. So think about what you need while other people are working, and do that thing that you need to do. Okay. So. Um, I'm going to take on the role of the guy who's moving you forward. And I would like to invite you to experiment with different ways of getting what you need around that. And, not, and there's not a good, there's not a best or there's not a um, wrong or right way to do this. There's just the one that gets the most results in the most efficient way. The best results for you in the most efficient way. So you could very well give them, give them some anger about the fact that they're trying to take over. Or you could be totally neutral about it. The job is to decide what's going to get you the best result and then notice what your habits are and try some other things so that you create a wide range of options so that you can grab the tool that you need from your bucket at the time that you need it and apply it in the way that's best. Okay. So Cynthia, this is, uh, this is really taking way too long. I need to move this forward. So we're gonna, 
interrupt me whenever you like. We're going to uh, we're going to do that. What did, what Cynthia said before? Let's, wait. Yeah. let's 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 wait just a moment. I, I I see that you want to move this along faster, but I'm not ready to move at that pace. And so I would like you to, to wait just a moment while I uh, see, get a sense of where I am and when it's time to move forward. How did that feel? That, that felt better. That felt like I had at least control over myself, if not necessarily over uh, the other person. Uh -huh. And so uh, I, you know, uh, I established my own, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, agency maybe, or some, something along those lines. I didn't feel like I was being overpowered. It might be interesting to know that when you said, what's the word I'm looking for? The word that came right to my mind and almost out of my mouth was agency. Oh. <laughs> And because I kept my mouth shut, because you had just said, this, I, I'm, not, I'm not wanting you to take care of the pace right now. Yeah. Give me a limiting message. I kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know that we're doing this as a scenario. And by keeping my mouth shut and taking your question as rhetorical, rather than an, an invitation for me to interfere, you then took care of the word just fine moments later and you brought on what you needed to say. Oh. You offered me the opportunity, and perhaps the imagined man that you might be dealing with, to to see how changing their behavior can, in fact, be more efficient than imagining that it's their job to move things along every time. Okay. Yeah, I see that. That's really interesting. That's really interesting. Because just because I can move things along faster does not mean that that will end up with us having a better working relationship, be smoother, be more efficient, understanding things better, any of those things. So it's just yeah. a habit of me pushing the along. Yes, I see that. And even if I'm offended by what you're doing, or I give you a who you think you are message, or even if I get defensive right after that, that doesn't mean that what you chose isn't in fact, wasn't in fact the best decision. It just means that I'm irritated, and I may feel free to be irritated. I mean, you know, that doesn't mean that you were wrong. It just means that I'm having difficulty with what we're doing. And the more we can give space for having difficulty with what we're doing without shoving each other around, the better we'll have an environment in which everybody can bring what they need to the surface and we can figure out what's best for them. Yeah. My, that's been my experience. Yeah. Boy, that, that makes me think of a lot of things in my past that have um, guided my behavior previously. And uh, I just, you know, it's one of those aha moments where you look at things and go, oh, so that's why I do that. Well, now I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to do that automatically anymore to defend myself. I have another option. Well said. We are drawing to the close of the time we had scheduled for this. Okay. And my choice, my, um, my automatic choice, because I haven't thought about the whole lot, is to ask either to ask Adriana to have some time um, so that we all get a chance to do that. And then we would need to end right after that. Um, and there are also um, other options. If you don't feel moved to do something at this point, we could also do um, a reminder uh, exercise that puts us in mind of how things physical are related to things psychological. Um, and then we could end with that. Um, but there's, there's all kinds of options, but I want the first one to be, do you need and or want to take some time right now? I like to listen because <laughs> I have a lot of those aha moments too, but I like what Cynthia said about automatically reacting to something that's what i struggle with i don't i know what i'm doing wrong 95 percent of the time i'm like oh that wasn't okay oh i shouldn't have done that oh crap but i can't stop that is my problem i don't know i i know i've always known i have options i don't know how to select the right one because 
uh, in that scenario that you guys are doing, I'd be the impatient one. I'd be the one to be like, let's go. You aren't doing this how I want you to do it. Can you please move along? And when they tell me no, I get upset. So I, I don't know where I'm going with this. I just thought like all of that interaction I was really focused on because it, I don't know, spoke to me, but I don't know how to be the better person. I don't know. Would you like some feedback on what you said? Yes, <laughs> always. I heard a bunch of stuff and I'm not gonna be able to, I'm not gonna be able to get it all, but there are a couple of things that I say that might be interesting to you and you can stop me anytime, okay? Mm -hmm. This is, I'm not doing this especially right now. I just thought, hey, what if I had a chair? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> then Rosalie can have the one back there by the couch, and I can have this one. You can look right into that camera if you want to, Rosalie. But you'd have to look at the phone. There you go. Um, so one thing that occurred to me was you said um, you put yourself in the role of the person who does the pushing, mm -hmm. and said that you can't stop. Correct. The first thing that occurred to me was hmm, if we were on the mat, and it were, I, we have permission to grab and sort of gently try to hit each other to experiment with this stuff. And you said, I can't stop. The first thing I would say is, oh, well, let's, let's create an exercise in which you do, in fact, stop so that you realize you can. And it's just a question of when you would or wouldn't. Okay. Because the idea that you can't do something forecloses it as though it were literally not possible when it is, in fact, possible. I mean, I've watched you stop. Mm -hmm. Um especially when the stakes get pretty high, because then, you, then your fear level seems to go up and that assists you in being able to stop, is that you realize the consequences of this just got really big and then you get sort of quiet and wait to see what happens next because you're afraid. Fear can be really helpful in that way, but it can also be problematic in that it stops you when you wasn't a good idea to stop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the, for exercise one would be, what would be a good exercise for you? What could, agreement could you make with yourself about stopping when you're disinclined to stop and going when you're inclined to stop and it's not helpful, you know what I mean? So the stopping and going exercise, if we're talking about just the physical martial art, it would be obvious that that would be a perfect thing to experiment with, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you, the same thing is true psychologically, is that when you, your habit is to not stop, so you stop. Your habit is to stop immediately and you think you know i think i'm probably not as in danger as i thought i was i can probably keep moving a little bit and you mess with your movement that would be the first thing i would suggest is figuring out some way to mess with that a little bit and experiment with it to see that you can stop when you think you can mm -hmm. the second thing is um that it occurred to me is when you're identifying yourself as being the kind of the aggressive one i'm going to push it forward and i get angry when they tell me not to um you might all, you might notice that and see how that flips. When do you imagine yourself as aggressive because you want to move forward, when in fact, probably moving forward that would not be a bad idea, that you, it was actually a good idea, it just was put forward in the wrong way, or it felt, it felt to you like you were pushing too hard. Um, so do some role flipping. You assign yourself at the aggressor's part when probably you were just really wanting what needed to happen, and the question is how to do that right. And then notice when you're being aggressive and um, figure out a way to hold yourself responsible for that without feeling like it's there's anybody to blame for it. Mm -hmm. so I have a sneaking suspicion, and this is a gendered piece again too, that you probably have a pretty good idea about some stuff, and you've been told for a significant time in your life that, that that's not what girls do. <laughs> they're, not, they're not aggressive, so you're wrong when you feel like you should aggressively move forward. And I, again, that's probably a pretty good message for me because I've been told my whole life, you always aggressively move forward. So I should probably, you know, not do that quite as much, but it's my suspicion, and I don't know this about you, that maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to insist on what you want some, sometimes um, in that regard. So, I mean, there's a whole lot of figuring out, is this the time that I should move forward or not? And if you just wonder about it and then just feel hopeless, you don't experiment with the possibilities and find out when it's when you've got the dial set at the right level. How's this sounding so far? It, 
I think I, my biggest issue has always been just asserting myself. I'm not an assertive person. So when I do feel like I want to move forward or do so, that's why I immediately label myself as the aggressive person, as the one that's wrong, because I want to do something. And it's always felt not fair, like, like I'm being too um, selfish if I want something for myself. So it's really difficult. And I know that it's all about, you know, trying to think of how to do it differently. But I guess it all goes back to like, but should I? I don't need to. It's okay. It's fine. Like, it doesn't matter. I always do that. And there's two ways to respond to that. One is I should say, no, you've been conditioned to be a girl and you really got to be aggressive. But that might not be right in the circumstance either. My question is, what would it be like to try to hit the middle ground of not deciding whether it's right or wrong to move forward and then just experiment with moving forward in this circumstance? I feel like I shouldn't move forward, so I'm going to push it a little bit. Or I feel like I should move forward and I'm going to like back off a little bit. You know, so you're, you're experimenting with it like you would tune up a car or um, add a little more seasoning to a, to a recipe or something so that it stops being about you being right or wrong and starts being an experiment in the various things you could do. It's hard though, because the, yeah. <laughs> the stakes are kind of are pretty high. Other people get upset and they literally or metaphorically shake a finger in your face especially men, if I may say that, because that's what we've been taught to do. And it's really hard in my experience to really stop doing that, to tell other people they're right or wrong and just to say, this isn't working for me for some reason. I'm not sure what it's about. Rather than you're being too aggressive or you know, who do you think you are or any of that defensive stuff. That was good. <laughs> So it I'm, always gets me thinking, but yeah. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just asking if you if you're noticing what you're doing and if it meets your needs. And if it doesn't, what kind of experiment would you need to agree with yourself about to see if you could do things differently? And my sense of it is that doing things a little differently is usually not as dangerous as it seems at first. Well, you just said though the meets your needs part. I'm also always highly acutely concerned of the other person's needs I it, it, I'm very much like that I always have been like I want to do this but what if that person doesn't like it I know that they don't whatever so I I always put them first in a way so that's another thing that is difficult for me is being able to I like I do identify what I need I just never follow through with it I just like it's fine. and the the brutal part of this um for a lot of people is you are, choo you are choosing that. You've been conditioned to choose it, right? You have all kinds of reasons that it has been your most likely choice. And, but if you continue doing it, especially as we're doing this work, it will be because you're choosing it as a strategy now and you're responsible for it. So I'm not sure, Again, if it were on the physical martial arts map and you were making a strategic choice that ends up with you getting grabbed or hit for control, you would go, oh, well, maybe, yeah, maybe that's not a good idea. It's difficult to do it psychologically in my experience. But, you, that, but if you're agreeing to, the, to this experiment, which is you're thinking about conflict as though you were a martial artist, then psychologically that applies as well. Every time you know what you need, put that second, and choose the other person's needs over yours, thereby silencing yourself, you are not, in my experience, dialing in the most efficient, best way for everybody to get what they need. You are leaving yourself out of the equation. And there are very gentle, non-invasive, not going to get you clobbered ways to shift and do things more subtly um, so that you are getting more of what you need, asking, making proposals, describing things, all these, all those all those tactics are designed to move you in the direction of having more options. So you can think, you know, this time I think I really need to just, not knowing what the outcome will be, put forward what I need and see what happens. The other person might need to wait. They might need to get accustomed to the idea that they will not get what they need all the time from you. They, they might start relying on themselves more. 
That might feel weird. There's all kinds of options. Cool. And again, I don't know what would be best. Yeah. Oh. I guess it would just depend on whatever situation I'm in at the time. Yeah. But, but the patterns that you repeat are the patterns that you repeat situation after situation. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is that how you want to do it? Not and, really. And if the answer is no, the question would be, what would you like to try instead? It's hard. <laughs> Rosalie, can, Rosalie can say to her mama, I don't want all that criticism. It, feels, it doesn't feel good to me. Will you please just tell me what you need and be patient with me? And the other person might say, no, just do what I tell you. And when it's your mama, sometimes you just need to do what you're told. But if your mama's doing it in a way that makes you feel very uncomfortable, and then how would you talk to her in a way that is still respectful, but really does ask for what you need? How would you say, I understand that you're upset. Please be patient with me. And I feel like there's too much criticism in what we're doing right now. I don't want to do it that way anymore. And her mama might say to her some very difficult things like, yes, but when you ignore me and you don't do what I tell you until I yell at you, then I end up yelling a lot, which I don't like either. You know, they, in that conversation that goes back and forth, as long as you hold on really tightly to saying things respectfully and clearly and describe and make proposals, it's hard to not let go of that and just start yelling or walk away or feel disappointed or like this is never going to change or bad about yourself. Or, there's so many ways to do this in a way that's not helpful. Yeah. In my experience. Yeah. And that's with me too. I mean, I get frustrated and say things that I regret later and um, are am too slow or too fast. But I, I try to hold on to the feeling of it being as kind as it can be. And the further it gets from kindness, the more it feels like a knife fight and not like something we're just figuring out together, the more I think to myself, yeah, I'm not doing this very well. Because I want to say the other person is not doing it well. You're doing this wrong. And the minute I do that, it makes the feeling of it worse. And the minute I think to myself, I wonder how I could do this better. It's a very different feeling than you're doing this wrong. And I'm looking for that felt sense when someone grabs my body or when someone tries to grab my brain, I feel the quality of it is different. When I focus on what needs to happen for everybody, including me and including everybody I'm within reach of. Wow. Are you all ready to end? Yeah, I think so. That's a lot to think about. Thank you think about so much for your time. Um, are you? How do you feel about this video being shared with other people? Would you rather it stay private, or would you be? Are you? Uh, do you welcome the idea of it being shared? I don't see how anything I said could be helpful to other people, but you can share it. I think you would be very surprised. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm okay. I didn't really, you know, just describe a specific situation with an individual, so. I, I, yeah, I thought it'd be okay. And so next time, what I'm hearing is next time it might be helpful to uh, introduce that idea at the beginning mm -hmm. so people could think about it at that time rather than this time when it feels like there's pressure to say yes. Right. Well, let me add mm -hmm. to that. If at any time you change your mind about that, though it's not impossible to erase things entirely, I can make them very difficult for anybody to find. If you change your mind about my sharing this and it's been shared, tell me and I will go and find it and stomp out every instance of it I can find. So this is not um, this is not the end of the conversation. If any time you want that to be different, let me know. Okay. And if there's any feedback about this session that you'd like to give me, or the email I sent out, or whatever, um, I would like to invite other people to join us. Um, and I'm not sure what size group would be best, or how that's going to work. It'll be a big experiment. I didn't get an email. It may have come very late because I didn't get your email address until uh, we were very close to the session time. So it might be in your inbox right now. I'm moving because they're blowing leaves outside and it's too loud. Sorry. So if there's anything else you want to add, now be the time. Otherwise, I'm going to sign this off. I think I'm good. It was nice. I
I liked it. It was different. Cool. Would well, you want to do this once a week on a Saturday? Do you want to do it more than once a week, especially while we're in quarantine? How do you want to, oh, excuse me, shelter in place? How, yeah. do, how do you want to do this? It's not quarantine. It is not quarantine. Not, not quarantine. Not, not quarantine. They're, they're I... in this house, by the way, as a, as a, as a sort of a self-report. We're doing pretty well. I hope that's true of your families too. Yeah. Okay. I'm cool with any time you want to do it. If you want to do it more than once a week, I'd like that personally. I don't know how I would look. <laughs> Granted, my schedule's pretty open right now. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I did put out some stuff, so maybe I'll get a job soon. But um, if if I'm available, I'll definitely be here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So, do you have a preference? Um, I'm comfortable with, uh, I'm, you know, like, Andriana, at the moment, I have a pretty open schedule. Yeah. And so um, I feel like any contact we can be making uh, during this time of sheltering in place is going to be beneficial. So if we want to meet a couple times a week or if we just want to meet once a week on Saturday, whatever, that just let me know. And if I can be there, I'll be there. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to start inviting bits of, bits of other people, and we'll start building it a little bit and see how many people show up, uh, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. The one thing that, um, uh, and I don't know how to address it, is the doing the physical parts, because the camera frame is limited, you know, and so it's not easy to see, like, what you're doing with your feet. Yep. <laughs> when we're doing a movement. When I was back here, yeah. don't fall down, Rosalie. <laughs> was it easier to see what I'm doing with my feet from this side when I do the two camera thing? You know, I really didn't try to look at that other camera frame. If I click on it, will it make, become big? Or you can do the thing. Oh, it does. You see everybody. I'm on my phone and I double tapped it and it does the big one that I'm seeing now. So okay. I don't or know. what's the other way to? Oh, it's gallery view. Is that it? Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> yeah, see now I can see you. Yay. Okay. Yay. That'll work. Okay. Well, that'll work. Let's try it that way then. Okay. Very cool. Oh, thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you for studying with that, Brandon. And so we'll see ya. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Rosalie. Bye, Rosalie. Bye, Rosalie. Bye, Rosalie. Bye, Rosalie. Bye, Rosalie.